Good evening, church family. I'm Pastor Eric Borchers from Our Savior Lutheran Church in Austin, Texas. This Lenten series that we've been focused on this year is titled Eyes on Jesus. And tonight we're going to be doing the last of the Wednesday night services. Tonight's title is Murderous Eyes. Our text for this evening is recorded in the book of Mark, the 14th chapter. I'd like you to take just a few moments to pause and read through verses 1 and 2 and then 53 through 65. Welcome to tonight's midweek message from my home to yours. You know, it's so easy when we're watching TV to pass judgment on seeing the violence of murder. It's easy for us to point a finger and say, oh, that person is wrong. The truth is, I think anyone is capable of murder, whether it's in thought or in deed. And we are so quick to say, yeah, but thought is way different than deed, is it? On earth, perhaps, but in God's eyes, if it happens in thought, we've already committed the crime. You know, the hatred that leads to murdering one's neighbor, it really is as old as time. It's as old as Cain killing his innocent brother, Abel. The chief priests and the scribes, they saw Jesus as an obstacle and they wanted to get rid of him by any means necessary and that included the violence of murder. They refused to believe what we learn in John eight forty four, which is that all things murderous come and originate from Satan. The scripture tells us that he's been the murderer from the beginning, that he's the father of all lies. Yet during the Passover, their murderous plans for Jesus would unwittingly bring about the Father's sacrifice of the ultimate Passover lamb, Jesus Christ himself. While some of the Jews had come to believe in Jesus, many of them saw him as a threat to their own influence and to the stability of the region of Judea. The Romans controlled the region. And while they were certainly willing to grant local control to traditional type authorities, they wouldn't tolerate chaos or disorder. And so they viewed Jesus as a political threat. And there were some who thought that he had come as a powerful military messiah and that he might try to gather a rebellion around him. Now, Mark doesn't name the high priest, but the other gospels identify him as Caiaphas. In John 11, we learn that Caiaphas was a key player in hatching the plan to destroy Jesus, to get rid of him. Caiaphas thought that it would be better for Jesus to die than to risk the nation being thrown into turmoil and rebellion. But unwittingly, he too was prophesying on behalf of God that Jesus would die for the nation and not just for the nation, but also to gather into one all the children of God who are scattered. Jesus, as Messiah, had come to die for the sin of the whole world. He came to usher in a kingdom, a kingdom that is in this world, but not of this world. The chief priests and the scribes saw Jesus as, well, they looked at Jesus really with murderous and angry eyes. They wanted him dead. I want you to think about that for a moment. Can you imagine walking into a room and everybody is glaring at you? Maybe you've experienced it on some level before, but imagine that everybody's glaring at you with murderous, angry eyes. You'd probably feel like disappearing, which really is something that Jesus could have done given his power, but instead he didn't do that. He stayed. He stayed as they glared at him. He stayed as they lied about him. He stayed as they spat on him and as they beat him. But I wonder, you think Jesus stared back with angry eyes? I mean, somebody stares at us at a restaurant and we give them a look as well or out in public somehow. Would he look at them with murderous eyes? I don't think so. But what do you think was in Jesus's eyes? I think he might have been sad. Maybe he was sad that the, that the men didn't believe that he was and is God's son. But I think the main thing in Jesus's eyes and the most important takeaway for us is that he had love in his eyes. It's what we see when we look at images of him. It's what we see when we look at him in scripture. Even during his trial, even during the suffering, even during the, the death, Jesus looked at us and he looked at the whole world 
with eyes of love. And he still looks at us that way. Even when we get really mad at one another or when we're mad at, at God himself, Jesus sees us with eyes of love and he's ready to forgive all of our sins and fill us with that love that he can only have. By giving us his love and of having faith in him as our savior, he helps us to look to other people with these eyes of love as well. He helps us to see what he sees, people in need of his love and friends in need of his forgiveness. Thank God that he sees us that way. Jesus said in Matthew chapter five, you've heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. Our hatred of others has rendered us no less guilty than the Jewish leaders who had murderous hearts and eyes toward Jesus, who handed him over to the Romans for execution. Dear friends, I have a prayer, and that prayer is that you find comfort in the fact that God the Father has been kind to us, even in the midst of our sinful, rebellious condition. He has accomplished the full forgiveness for all of our sins through the murder of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, there are four days between now and when we celebrate Palm Sunday with Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And because of how the people responded, I imagine the eyes of the people being joyfully excited as they shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Well, just a few feet away from all of that were those who had the murderous eyes. And they were saying, do you hear what these people are saying? Folks, I'd like to invite you to help us make this Palm Sunday and Easter just a little bit extra special. For Palm Sunday, I'd like you to take pictures of greenery that adorns your front door. You may say, well, I don't have any greenery. Get a plant, take a picture next to your front door. We just, we just wanna see that green representing the, the palms that were waved. You can even tack a green sash to your door, or if you have a banner, take a picture of it. And then after my message or during my message, upload it to Our Savior's Facebook page this Sunday, April 5th. Have a blessed rest of your week. In Jesus' name, amen.